Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science and this video is part of our series on maths for science and engineering. This video covers separable differential equations. Luckily, these are some of the easiest differential equations to solve. All you really need to know is how to evaluate an integral. And in this video, we will learn why that is the case. Despite their simplicity, separable differential equations feature in some really interesting areas, from beautiful geometric forms to exponential growth, which is very important in many branches of science and engineering, and even in areas like economics. So let's go! In this video, we consider separable first order ordinary differential equations. I know the name is a bit of a mouthful, um, so what do we mean by that? If we check a textbook, what we find is that they are equations that can be written as the derivative of y with respect to x equal to f of x times g of y. But let's dissect what each of the terms in the name means. The equation is first order because the highest derivative that appears in the equation is a first derivative. And it is an ordinary differential equation because there are no partial derivatives. The family of first order ordinary differential equations is vast, and in this video we will explore a small but important subset of such equations which are called separable. Now the key to identify a separable equation is to figure out whether it can be written in this form, where the right hand side is the product of two functions f and g, where the function f only depends on x, and the function g only depends on y. And the name separable perhaps isn't really obvious at this point, but it will become really clear later on in this video. So in practice, how do we know if a given differential equation is separable? What you need to do whenever you encounter a first order ordinary differential equation is to try standard algebraic manipulations to see if you can transform it to this form here. If you can, then you have a separable equation. And don't worry if this task looks a bit daunting, because with enough practice, you will become proficient at the required manipulations. Okay, so now that we've established notation, when solving differential equations, our job will always be the same, to find y as a function of x. And in this video, we will cover how to find y as a function of x for separable equations. But before we do that, let's see a few examples of separable equations so that you get a feeling for what they may look like. We can have dy dx equal to minus x over y. By inspection, we can clearly see that on the right hand side, we have separate factors for x and y. And this demonstrates that we do have a separable equation. But to make this a bit more concrete, we can compare our example to the general form up here. And we can identify the function f as equal to minus x and the function g as equal to 1 over y. Note that we could also choose f to be x and then g would be minus 1 over y. Either way, we clearly see that this example has the general form of a separable equation. And before we move on, let me tell you that this differential equation describes a circle centered at the origin. And you can find the detailed solution of that in a separate video that's linked in the description. As a second example, we can write dy dx equals y. And by inspection, it is again clear that this equation is separable. In fact, the right hand side only depends on y and we don't have any explicit function of x. But just to make this pedantically concrete, in this case, the function f is equal to 1 because there is no explicit x dependence, while the function g equals y. And again, we can clearly see that this example has a general form of a separable equation. This equation describes exponential growth, and we will solve it in a moment. But before we do that, Let's discuss how to solve a general separable first order equation. This is the general equation we want to solve. 
if we can find a general strategy to solve equations of this form, we will be able to apply it directly to any separable equation we encounter. We will first solve it by using an algebraic trick that simplifies things enormously. So what's that trick? Let's copy down our equation again. And the trick will be to consider the derivative dy dx as a standard ratio of the quantity dy over the quantity dx. And I know a lot of you are probably gasping disapprovingly, how dare we do this? Don't worry, there's a reason why we can do it. And bear with me and I will explain why a bit later. What's important for now is that treating the derivative as a ratio, we can manipulate this expression such that we move all quantities that depend on y to the left hand side, so g is now dividing, and all quantities that depend on x to the right hand side, so that dx is now multiplying. What we have just done is called separation of variables. We have separated the y's and the x's by moving all the y's to one side and all the x's to the other side. We can do this for any equation of this form, and for this reason, an equation like this is called a separable equation. Once we've separated the variables like this, we can next integrate both sides with an integral over y on the left hand side and an integral over x on the right hand side. Evaluating these integrals will give us an expression relating y and x, and therefore we will have the solution to our differential equation. We'll look at an example of solving a separable equation like this in a moment, but the discussion here is general and applies to any differential equation of this form up here. Now there's a small caveat to this discussion. Finding a solution requires being able to evaluate these two integrals. While many important differential equations in science and engineering lead to integrals that we can indeed solve explicitly, there are integrals for which this may be difficult or even impossible. So this is just something to bear in mind. And I also haven't forgotten about that mathematical justification for the algebraic trick I promised earlier. We will discuss it at the end of the video. But first, let's look at an example of solving a separable differential equation. Let's look at the example dy dx equals y. First, let's copy it down. And remember that what we discussed in the previous slide is that we can solve separable equations by taking all the terms that depend on y to one side and those that depend on x to the other. Next, we integrate the left hand side and we also integrate the right hand side. Let's start with the left hand side. This is one of the standard integrals that you've likely encountered before, and it is equal to the natural logarithm of y. And we also have an integration constant c1. So let's next consider the right hand side. This is again one of the easy integrals, and we get x plus an integration constant c2. We can now insert the first integral into the left hand side and the second integral into the right hand side. And we get that the natural logarithm of y plus c1 is equal to x plus c2. And we can rewrite this as the logarithm of y equal to x plus c3, where c3 is a new constant made up of c2 minus c1. Finally, we can calculate the exponential of both sides of this function to get e to the power logarithm of y equal to e to the power x plus c3. Remember that the exponential of a natural logarithm just gives the argument of the logarithm, so we get y here. And remember that the exponential of a sum is equal to the product of exponentials, so that we get the exponential of x times the exponential of c3. As c3 is just a constant, the exponential of c3 is just another constant, and we will call it c. Overall, we can write that the function y of x is equal to c times the exponential of x, and this is our solution to the differential equation at the top. We could 
just stop here, as we have now solved this differential equation, and also found that the solution takes this form. And when you get to this point, you could ask yourself, is this true or have I made a mistake somewhere, say in the integration steps? There are two things that you can do to convince yourself that the solution you found is correct. The first thing we should do is to try and insert the solution back into the equation and to confirm that the equation is obeyed. So let's do it. Our proposed solution is y equals c e to the power x. And to confirm that this is a valid solution, we can evaluate the derivative of y, which explicitly gives us the derivative with respect to x of this solution. Remember that the derivative of an exponential is equal to the exponential. And using this result and remembering that c is just a constant, we get this expression for the derivative of our solution. And now we see that this here is simply the original function y. Therefore, we find that the derivative of our proposed solution is indeed equal to y. And this confirms that our solution is correct. The second useful thing you can do to check that your result makes sense is to draw a graph of your solution function. And that's what we're going to do next. On this pair of axes, the horizontal axis is the x-axis and the vertical axis is the y-axis. The solution of a differential equation often involves one or more constants, in our case the c here. What this means is that this is a solution to the differential equation for any value that c may take. And to put it another way, that means that there is a whole family of solutions to the differential equation parameterized by the constant c. As c can take any value, there is in fact an infinite number of solutions to this equation. This means that for plotting this solution, we need to first make a choice for the parameter c. Let's first choose the simplest value, c equals zero. In this case, our solution is trivial as we get y equals zero, and the plot of this solution is this blue horizontal line on the x-axis. Does this solution make sense? Our equation says that the slope of the function is equal to the function itself, and indeed the slope of the constant function zero is itself zero. Now, for positive values of c, we have a standard exponential function, and here I'm showing a few representative values in green. The darkest green corresponds to a value of c equal to 0 0.001, while this fifth green curve corresponds to a value of c equals 1, and as such, the crossing point of this curve with the vertical axis here corresponds to a value of y equals 1. The exponential function grows exponentially all the way from x coming from minus infinity to x going to plus infinity. Do these solutions make sense? Qualitatively, we do indeed have that the slope of the exponential function grows with growing x. We cannot assess the precise relationship just by eye, but at least the general form of the solution is consistent with the equation we have. Finally, let's consider negative values for c, with a few examples shown in red and orange in the diagram. We still have exponential functions, but due to the negative value of c, they are reflected about the horizontal axis compared to the corresponding solutions for positive c. And I just want to emphasize once more that any of these functions is a valid solution to our differential equation. We've now discussed how to solve separable first order ordinary differential equations, which remember, take this form. If you're only interested in the practicalities of solving these equations, we've already discussed the separation of variables strategy and you can stop watching right now. But as promised, for those of you who are also interested in a better justification for the algebraic trick of treating the derivative as a ratio, then this is what we will discuss for the rest of this video. Let's copy down our differential equation once more, and to make things as clear as possible, I'm including all functional dependencies in this expression. 
For example, I'm explicitly writing g as a function of y, which in turn is a function of x. Now I won't be completely consistent as to whether I keep all functional dependencies in, I will only do so when it can help me make the discussion clearer. But overall, the key point is to make sure that you remember the relevant dependencies when necessary. So moving on, we rewrite this equation by separating the f and g functions, but this time we don't play any tricks on the derivative, so we keep the dy dx together. And also note that I'm leaving some space to facilitate the next step. Using up these spaces, we now integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x on the left hand side and also with respect to x on the right hand side. To make progress, let's define a new function, capital G of y, such that its derivative with respect to y is equal to 1 over little g of y. To put it another way, capital G of y is the antiderivative of 1 over little g of y. Keeping this definition in mind, we consider the derivative of capital G with respect to x, and again I'm including all functional dependencies in this expression. Now using the chain rule, we first get the derivative of capital G with respect to y multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to x. By the definition of capital G as the antiderivative of 1 over little g, we can insert this definition into this term and we end up with this expression. Let's copy down this latest result and I'm switching the left and right sides and also leaving spaces in preparation for the next step. This next step is to integrate both sides with respect to x, starting with the left hand side and then the right hand side. This integral in the right hand side is now easy to evaluate and we simply get the function capital G. As capital G is the antiderivative of 1 over little g as defined on this line here, then we can rewrite our result as the integral of 1 over g with respect to y. Overall, we can see that this integral over x is equal to this integral over y. And inserting this result into the left hand side of our original equation up here, we can conclude that the integral of 1 divided by g with respect to y is equal to the integral of f with respect to x. And you can now probably see what we've accomplished. This is exactly the same expression that we got earlier on the, in the video when we used the algebraic trick of separating the dy and dx terms in the derivative. But we've now obtained this result without resorting to that trick. So this is our justification for that separation of variables trick that we use when solving this class of differential equations. Right, so let's summarize everything we've learned in this video. We have looked at separable first order ordinary differential equations, which take this form. The solution involves two steps. First, we separate the terms in the equation by putting all y's on one side and all x's on the other side. And second, we integrate both sides, the left hand side with respect to y and the right hand side with respect to x. And with this strategy, we can solve any such equation and you can find links to example solutions in the description. You can check out additional examples of separable equations in the videos that are linked in the description. I really hope that you liked the video and please subscribe.